it's actually quite an unusual position to get yourself into as a, a continent or as a, a, a country, to get yourself into a position where you don't think that your external borders need any policing. Um, and I say that this, this is something which goes through the heart of everyone, not just in Europe, but everybody in the world. We all know the problems of this. We all know the uh, personal and philosophical challenges we all go through when trying to think about this issue. Who should come into a country? How many people can a country take? What are the limits? Are there some people you don't want to take? Are there some places you want to be wary about taking people from? What happens when people are in, then do something they shouldn't? What do you do with them? I throw that as just a few of the things out there. But one of the most fascinating things about the whole thing is that Chancellor Merkel, who she's not exactly the heroine of this book, you, um, Chancellor Merkel has an extraordinarily interesting psychological thing on this whole issue. Because in, in March 2015, she was on a uh, television show in Germany where an extraordinary thing happened. I advise you, if you're interested, to look this up. It's actually on YouTube now. Um, she was in a studio discussion, and it was a, one of those ones with young Germans, you know, one of those sort of rather gruesome television programs where a politician has to connect with the young. And, right. Well, basically, the point of the program is just to survive. Um, and uh, Chancellor Merkel did this, and there was a question from a very smart young woman who said that she was of Lebanese-Palestinian origin, and she was um, 14, I think. She asked a question to the Chancellor, and she said, this is, I say, in March of 2015, before the height of the crisis, but when this was already starting to be an issue. And this young girl says to the Chancellor, I'm, um, I'm very worried. My father was here on a form of work visa, but it's run out, running out, and I'm afraid that we're going to be returned to Lebanon. And something extraordinary happens. Chancellor Merkel says to her, You're, you seem like a very nice girl. And then she says, but politics is hard. And we cannot take everybody from Lebanon who would like to come to Germany. We can't cope with them. And even if we did, we couldn't cope with the other people who came from other places as a result. That's what she says to the girl. And then the gruesome thing happens that the next question comes and you can hear that the girl is crying, at which point Merkel goes over and sort of pats her on the back and or rubs her on the back and the presenter, clearly knowing he's just got the thing that's going to be on all the evening news programs, sort of tries to obviously get the Chancellor to say, no, okay, your family can stay. But Merkel doesn't. But then only a few months later, at the end of August, she says this thing, wir schaffen das, we can do it, we can open the borders, we can, we can deal with this, we can take them in. And this, I say at one point in the book, is an exact inversion of the normal European attitude towards migration, where most Europeans are hostile to the idea of the mass immigration as an abstract concept, nevertheless have no beef or certainly no unpleasantness, I'm talking about most people, with migrants themselves. In other words, they dislike the idea in the abstract, but they have no, no problem with the migrant. And Chancellor Merkel seemed to have exactly the opposite of the normal European reaction, which was that she could hold the line with an individual, but in the abstract it collapsed, it fell down. Now, let me just spend a couple of minutes before I wind up these opening remarks saying something about that. Because that falling apart of holding the idea in the abstract is to me the most interesting thing about this whole issue. We know since my book came out, somebody confirmed with a German journalist um, that one of the reasons why at the end of August 2015, Merkel said we can't hold the borders, we can't have them closed, was because she was very, very wary of, in fact terrified, of photos going around the world of German border guards repelling migrants. She just didn't want that photo opportunity to happen. And this, it seems to me, again, 
is an entirely understandable situation. Um, but that's not a situation that starts on the 29th of August 2015, but one that goes a very long way back. And this then gets into the whole issue which I spend about half my book on, which is the underlying reasons why Europeans have got into the very, very tricky state we're now in on this issue. And I say that there are roughly three major things that underlie it. The first is uh, the ongoing issue of guilt in Europe. Almost too obvious to say, but like the French philosopher Pascal Bruckner, uh, I think that the, one of the major preoccupations of post-war Europe remains a sense of guilt. Guilt, uh, not just German war guilt, but a German war guilt that has successfully spread across the continent to the extent that even Britain uh, uh, has a form of it now. Uh, the second is what I describe as an existential form of European tiredness. And the third, related to the second, is what I call the sense that the story might have run out. Um, there's a very remarkable French uh, uh, philosopher who I wish were, were better known uh, outside France called Chantal Del Sol. And I use a, um, a metaphor she gives in a book she wrote in the mid-90s after the end of the Cold War that in English is, is called Icarus Fallen. And she says, she describes the condition of modern European man and woman by the end of the Cold War as being, as she says, in the position that Icarus would have been in had he survived the fall. Um, that is, we, we dreamt all of these extraordinary dreams. We dreamt dreams of religion. We dreamt dreams of nationalism. We dreamt dreams of politics, political visions. The last two major dreams, nightmares that they were, were the dreams of fascism and communism, both of which, one after the other, brought the continent into destruction. So that by the time the Berlin Wall falls, and by the time communism is seen, or at least was seen for time to have fallen, um, Europeans were left in this bizarre situation, as she says, that Icarus would have been in, that uh, we, were, we were surrounded by the remnants and the, the devastations of our dreams, our wings singed, bruised, battered, and so on, yet still here, raising the follow-on question, so what do we do? 